Deirdre Bro. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Nice to be here. Now, current politics in Edinburgh, mm -hmm. current issues, let me think of a few things that have really uh, struck me that have changed ever since the, the new coalition. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. capital coalition. I yep. think, perhaps it's me, perhaps I'm not reading the evening news as much, perhaps I'm reading more news online, I don't know, but there seems to be an awful lot less controversy around in the city at the moment since the SNP and the Labour got together mm -hmm. in the coalition. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? I would say that's possibly, yes, yeah. I mean, we, obviously in opposition to each other, we were oppositionist. And um, now we're uh, actually working together. I think it's actually working very well. Um, is, there, is there serious scrutiny of the governing part the, uh, the governing coalition now without with both of you on the same side who's, who's doing the serious um, questioning oh well, I mean we, go, we always I mean you know, any administration worth its salt is going to be um, scrutinising intently everything that goes before it and I don't think that's changed um, particularly from the SNP point of view of course but I think with um, the new uh, arrangements you know there are new committee arrangements we've certainly very much beefed up audit for example um, mm. the committee for that is going to have a much larger role um, and uh, and you know I think we'll be taken very seriously it's also going to be meeting monthly I think rather than before when it was meeting I mean, two there was or a, three monthly a very, the Labour Party here in Edinburgh had, had a very clear vision for what they wanted to do if they won the election mm -hmm. I remember discussing it um, on Twitter and other social networks mm -hmm. before the election um, ambitious, I think we, we, you could describe their manifesto. <laughs> well, it's right to be ambitious, and I would hope ours was ambitious as well. We all want the best for the city. Co cooperation, or cooperative, not more than cooperation, cooperative. Yeah, the cooperative. Yes, I mean there which was is a not, yes, which is not a new idea, but somehow or other it's been refreshed. Yeah. Well, um, you could argue. I, I, I would say definitely since <coughs> the elections and the SNP and Labour um, being in coalition with each other that there has genuinely been a better feeling of cooperation amongst the opposition, you know, with the opposition parties as well. And uh, I think that's to be welcomed. I mean, today at Policy and Strategy, for example, I think, uh, you know, the administration agreed to take on some suggestions from the Green Party, for example. And, you know, I think it does feel that um, more recognition is being paid to some of the suggestions from the opposition parties. Not all of them, by any means. There's always going to be disagreement because we're different parties. We have different viewpoints. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I felt you know I felt quite positive about that. I'm just wondering myself. I'm thinking as you're speaking about the trams mm. and mm. something I read only a few days ago about oh, the trams might come six months might be finished six months ahead of schedule yes but I, I like, mm. you know that was a bit of a sort of spin because they're still going to be years late and only about a third of the original length to be fair yeah. <laughs> <coughs> well uh, you'll know the SNP's position very clearly on the trams prior to uh, everything being signed sealed and delivered and in fact you know even thereafter we were arguing against it for a referendum and um, unfortunately we were voted down on that however um, it got to a point where we had to um, a, you know, a go, go along with the the thing because the alternative was the city just being plunged into bankruptcy in mm -hmm. effect. So um, that that had to happen. But um, yeah, the whole six months early thing. I I, I, I mean, transport Is convener seems to be seems to be saying, well, it, you know, she doesn't certainly seem to be coming out with statements saying that. It, I believe it was some of the um, business oh, well, FSB or... Perhaps, it's, perhaps I so need to, it needs to persuade be. Leslie Hines to come in for interview and ask her herself. I'm sure she will. I think sure I'm just concerned that it's too quiet on the trams and uh, I'm suspicious. Mm. Things can still go wrong. Of, of course, with any, with any major infrastructure project, there are always going to be issues. I mean, the trams have been particularly beset, but um, I, th you know, everything I get back certainly as as a um, as a, a councillor myself is that things are, are running to time and to budget, and you know, um, things seem to be working okay. much better than they were before. So you know. What about we'll hope that continues. What about national politics? Um, mm -hmm. Last week was uh, the leader of the Labour Party in Scotland. I'm not sure yes. if she's uh, what her official title is. Uh, Joanne mm -hmm. 
Lamont, no Lamont, Maybe Lamont. Scottish Labour, okay. That she, you know, she seemed to be, she certainly had a very controversial speech. Yes. And uh, very warmly welcomed by everybody on the right. <laughs> yes. Um, how do you think it was uh, a wise move on the part of the Labour Party here in Scotland? I think it's notable that quite a number of the Labour Party don't appear to be commenting on it. I mean, I follow Twitter myself, and I'm sure you do. Um, quite a lot of people just seem to be <laughs> not commenting at all and perhaps hoping it's all going to go away. Which is the, usually the, the diplomatic way to, yes. to be um, on Twitter. I, I don't quite know what she was trying to achieve with that speech, well, I have to say. It, she repeated it this morning. Yes, I heard some Manchester. of that, yes. And uh, I heard some of her uh, speaking on Good Morning Scotland, I think it was this morning. I... I'm puzzled by the Labour Party, certainly at a national level, um, and, and what exactly... I mean, I've read some of the Twitter responses. What What is Labour? Is Labour does Labour exist anymore? If they don't support the universal benefits, what do they support? I mean, I don't think... They seem to be in such a muddle. I mean, that seems to be my... At a national level, I really don't understand where they're coming from, and I don't understand what prompted her speech because it seemed to come out of nowhere. No one seemed to be prepared for it. Um, I, thought, I thought Robert and McAlpine, what did he write under the, the Reed Foundation, which is involved? Oh, yeah, I read that, yeah. Uh, I thought his analysis was fairly oh, right, clear. So it it, it allowed the Labour Party in Scotland to unite the three parts, the, mm. the Westminster part, the Holyrood part, and the local government. And, it, and I think he pointed out that the one part of um, the spending in Scotland that wasn't attacked was local government mm, mm -hmm. but you know I always think when party leaders speak they should be speaking to the people <laughs> <That's fair laughs> not enough. necessarily just trying to address warring factions or you know. I think a speech of that significance you would think should have something in it that the people can respond to and I just thought it was uh, extraordinary, extraordinary speech. ok on the other side of the coin Mr. Salmond, mm -hmm. he's now been booed twice in public mm. recently. Mm -hmm. One St. George Square mm -hmm. in Glasgow and the other Sunday night in Chicago at the Ryder Cup. That's right. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going on? I don't know. I hope it's not some sort of coordinated attack on Mr. Salmond by people perhaps who don't support Mr. Salmond's point of view because... I remember, let's see, the one in Glasgow, that was, he was addressing... It was the, uh, the, it was the celebration of the Olympics team. The Olympics team, that's right. And I know, I seem to remember seeing on Twitter that some people were very pleased with themselves for handing out lots of union flags. Um, mm. And I just wonder if there's... I, I mean, I would hate to think this was the case. I would hate to think this was some sort of coordinated attempt to try and discredit the First Minister. Okay, but well, what if it's not coordinated? What if it... I have a sneaking suspicion he's turning into Marmite. Mm. Very popular. Still, uh, bear in mind, in recent years, he, he was the most popular politician in the UK. He won these awards. We're talking across the UK, not just in Scotland. Sure, yeah. He was winning mm -hmm. awards and mm -hmm. accepting mm -hmm. awards in London. Mm -hmm. And yet... He's been under consistent, sustained personal attack for years now on Twitter and, and Facebook. Mm, mm. I know some of the stuff that came out. Um, well, it's still coming out you? on a I daily know. basis. Well, I or thankfully don't access those very often, but uh, I remember at one point someone was retweeting some of the comments, and they were just appalling. And this was during the Olympics, I think, particularly. And I just thought, you know, what do they say? Playing the man, not the ball. It's. Um, mm. uh, uh, an unfortunate Do you think that's a sign events. of the current independence campaign, which is underway, if even if it's still a bit low, p low pace, um, mm. that it's turning nasty? When you say turning nasty, <laughs> I mean, oh, I those mean, of us in the SNP it are. It could be a lot nastier. Oh, some of the, For example, some of the statements from um, Northern Ireland unionists have been. Very incendiary, in fact, I would have thought. Mm -hmm, yes, they've been interesting. Um, and let's bear, let's, let's be perfectly frank. Some of the things that UK government did at the end of the seventies, mm. dirty tricks, we'll call them. I'm not going to go be specific, mm -hmm. but some of the things they did, like burying the Macron report. Worse than that, yes. all kinds of um, 
agent provocateurs joining, forming extremist mm-hmm. nationalist I mean, groups. The interesting thing, isn't it, isn't it the, the Macron report, for example, um, the mockery that people like my parents and all were subject to from people out with the party who, you know, when they were claiming um, various things about uh, Scotland oil and the potential revenue that could come to Scotland as a result of that... I mean, the dreadful treatment that they received is is just disgusting to me now. And I think I hope everyone bears in mind when some of the things are coming out from those supporting the union now, how they've, you know, how some of the things that they were claiming in those days have have, have just been disproved since. I mean, the Macron report is a classic example of, I mean, just disgraceful hiding that away for thirty years and not sharing that with with the people of this country. Right. I just I cannot understand well, sadly I can understand but I mean mm-hmm. it's well, uh, it's a terrible thing. I think we'll leave it there and thank you very much.